Shabbat Shalom. This week's Torah portion is Mishpatim, which means laws or statutes. And uh, we read, it's very interesting because this week's portion follows on the heels of the revelation in Mount Sinai. Last week we finished up chapter 20 and uh, we have the, the Ten Commandments at first and a few verses afterwards uh, referring to uh, the altar. And then in chapter 21, we begin as follows. Now these are the judgments, or the statutes, which thou shalt sell before them. And then it goes into several chapters, lists after list of rules, laws. And they are not religious laws in the classic sense. These are not laws that have anything to do with worship, or with sacrifice, or with prayer, or with any of the things that are normally associated with worshiping God. However, they are a very fully detailed list of laws having to do with society, having to do with how man should treat his fellow man. What happens, first of all, for the most part, how a person should be treated under the law. If somebody steals, what happens? If somebody hits somebody else, what happens? Uh, it's very. Uh, if someone gets into a fight, it, what happens when um, uh, somebody's ox gores uh, the neighbor? What happens when um, you uh, someone lies? Someone bears false testimony. What happens if uh, someone borrows something and then it returns it broken or he loses it? Uh, most of the laws having to do with something like this, plus there is an emphasis on treating the poor, treating the stranger fairly and kindly. Now, this is actually very interesting because this follows right on the heels of Revelation at Sinai, which was an incredibly religious event, which was more than any other event throughout the Bible, the direct meeting between God and the Jewish people, where where the Jewish people are able to hear God's voice for the first time. And in fact, the first words that God speaks to the Jewish people are, I am the Lord you, your God who has taken you out of the land of Egypt. And goes on uh, not to have uh, uh, bow down to idols, do not have idols, don't take the name of the Lord in vain, uh, except uh, honor the Sabbath, etc. Of course, the end of the Ten Commandments are also dealing with with issues between man and his fellow man. But I think this is actually very unique to the Bible because other religions, um, certainly in ancient times, uh, religions had to do with worship. They didn't have to do with courts of law. They didn't have to do with how men treat their fellow men, how society treats its citizens. And yet here, in the Bible, just after this most amazing spiritual religious event, we get right down to the nitty gritty of how men should treat their fellow men and how society treats its citizens. And I think it's a very, very powerful message because what God, I believe, is saying to us here is that if you want to be a holy society, if you want to be a holy people, then the place where that begins is in your relationships with your fellow neighbors, in treating people fairly and honestly, and having courts of law that will adjudicate disputes between people so that justice is achieved. Now, the, in, in this uh, Torah portion, in Mishpatim, in chapter 23, it, it begins in chapter 21, all of chapter 21, all of chapter 22, and the beginning of chapter 23 is more of these sorts of laws. Um, and then it comes to verse 20 uh, of chapter 23, which goes as follows. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you to the place which I have prepared. Take heed of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transactions, for my name is in him. But if you shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries, for my angel shall go before you and bring you to the Amorite, the Hittite, the Ferizite, the Canaanite, the Chivite, the Jebusite, 
and I will cut them off. You shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and completely break down their images, and you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. So it's just a few verses, and seemingly doesn't really fit in this entire section about societal laws. And yet what this section makes absolutely and abundantly clear is that the whole purpose of the laws that came before is for the going into the land of Israel. God, in a sense, is preparing the Jewish people. Okay, now you've come out of Egypt. That was step one. Step two, you received the revelation at Sinai. The next step, you are going to be given a series of statutes, a series of laws, so that you can set up a just society in Israel. And before you get there, of course, before you're able to settle in the land of Israel, they're going to have to come in land and conquer the land. And one of the things that God says here to them is that they have to destroy the idols, they have to destroy the pagan worship of the nations they are found, finding there. And I think we have here together a very, very important message. On the one hand, belief in God, dedication to God, as opposed to foreign idols, is very, very important. That is the basis upon which... Uh, the Jewish people's willingness or the children of Israel's willingness to even obey God and listen to any of the laws, first they have to be willing to obey God in general, accept him as God. And of course, going with that is destroying other gods. But the next step, of course, is to build a sound society based on justice. And I think what these verses are essentially saying is it's not just about these gods being other than God, the God of Israel. They're not just pagan gods but that they are coming into a land of Israel where the pagan rules uh, controlled, where the pagan rules not only about who you worship, but how you treat your fellow man. And we know that Canaan was a land notorious for a terrible, corrupt, and, and violent society. Uh, child sacrifice was, was common, and, and, and uh, sexual abominations, and so many other things. Uh, that was part of the Canaanite society. And so what God here is saying as follows. He says, you have to obey God and destroy the idols. You have to set up a humane society. And in order to do that, you have to destroy the pagan worship. Because you have to destroy the pagan societies that were based on gross injustice. And you put that together, and then they will indeed be able to settle in the land of Israel. God will indeed assist them in defeating their enemies. Living in the land of Israel is not just about taking possession of a land that God has promised them, but about setting up a just society in order to replace the terrible society that's there before them. Shabbat Shalom from Samaria.